Hello everybody, good morning. And uh, this is Mr. Ege, continuing on the assembly of the uh, clock. Now we are on the back face of the clock. And in the previous video, we assembled uh, minutes, second and hour, our arms onto the face. Okay, in the previous video, uh, we used insertion constraint and we tested. Okay, there is enough distance between uh, each one of those uh, arms and also they are rotatable after the insertion according to the insertion constraint and I rotated each one of them and seems to be there working apparently that's how the second arm rotates how the hour arm rotates how the minute arm rotates how the hour arm rotates like that okay now we're going to add uh, the first uh, two gears okay there is a gear function, but this has to be calculated earlier on a blank sheet of paper. And I gave you the blank sheet of paper. The mechanical advantages, okay, between the hour arm and minute arm is 12x or 12. Mechanical advantage is between the second arm and the hour arm is 60 and 60x. 60, I break it down to 60, 3 by 4 by 4. Five. If you multiply three by four by five, the product will come out as 60. And I'm doing this in order to reduce the uh, large differences between the diameters. Okay. Otherwise, uh, at the expense of uh, making very large uh, diameter gears, we are going to be generating uh, something, a uh, very large uh, clock. But if you want to reduce the size of the clock, you want to re make the gears proportional and as close to as uh, to each other as possible. Okay, so that's why uh, 60 mechanical advantage became three times four times five. So well, uh, that means we have we are using three, four, and five mechanical advantages between the second uh, second arm and the minute arm. Between the minute arm and hour arm, there is 12x, and there's 12 uh, mechanical advantages, 12, meaning that we're going to break it down to 3 and 4. 3 times 4 is 12, and that means we have two mechanical advantages, okay, to use gear. Each mechanical advantage, for example, take, is, is demonstrating uh, the relationship between two gears. So when I say 3, Mechanical advantage three, that means you have to have two gears, okay, in between. All right, so I'm going to demonstrate how it is used uh, in practice in making the clock uh, gears. And right now in front of me has the, I have the, uh, the design of the clock face in the back face of the clock. And now I'm going to move, and my inventory is already open. And now I'm going to move my cursor to uh, tab click on the design tab and when you click on the design tab you will get multiple options here and one of the commands is spur gear so click on the down arrow of the spur gear and select the spur gear option spur gear is basically the regular gear that we use all the time in our daily lives and there are other gears worm gear there's a bevel gear which is 90 degree axles between the worm worm gear is commonly used in the rack and pinion systems of the cars or and this is the spur gear so click on the spur gear now you're going to have a dialog box okay i'm going to bring the dialog box in front of you momentarily even though it's blocking my view uh spur gear dialog box okay demonstrates i set it up Okay, to the module. So it use it will use a modular gear size and design. Uh, under the design guide, there are model, a number of options. Each one of them will work in a different way. And I find that the model is module option is the best and quickest way of doing this one. Uh, you may try the other ways, but uh, there, it's going to take immensely longer time to do these things. Okay, because uh, Behind every value here, every variable here, there is a, believe it or not, there is an amazing uh, lengthy uh, equations. <laughs> so 
Uh, for example, under the design guide, you have desired gear ratio. And as, as mentioned before, the first gear ratio I want to use is three. That means I am going to be dealing with two gears for the gear ratio of three. This is your mechanical advantage of three. Remember, the next mechanical advantage will be four. Next one is five. And then this is, again, we're talking only uh, the gears between the um, second arm and one of the axles. Okay, that gear, first gear, right now, gear number one and gear number two, gear number one is going to go on to the second arm, gear number two is going to go on to the axle. Okay, so I did not change anything else except I put this number three, UL, okay, unit length, and that's uh, modules, uh, mechanical advantages we're talking about. Number of the teeth, I set it to five, okay, so that means three times. You have to have, you will have five teeth, okay, on the first gear, and three times five is 15. On the second gear, when you go to the second gear, right here, you will see 15, because three times five is 15, so there's 15 teeth on the second gear. In the first gear, five teeth, in the second gear, 15 teeth, okay? That's the combination. I reduced the face width. It came originally as one inch, which is way too thick, okay? For a small clock like this so I'm, i made it one eighth of an inch i changed the face width of the second also the second arm also as as um 0 0.125 one eighth of an inch okay so first thing i want to do okay and and the first gear is set to component second gear is also set to component please pay attention to those little details number of teeth is five on the second gear is number of teeth. First sphere, I'm, I'm dealing with the first gear, which is supposed to be connected directly to second arm. Now, I have to make two choices here. I'm going to first cylindrical face. I'm going to choose the cylindrical face to show the computer what, uh, what I'm aiming to. So I'm going to click here on into the bu button right next to the cylindrical face. Click, and then I'm going to zoom in right on the surface of the second arm on the round surface, okay, of the second arm. I hope you can see that on the computer, okay. Then I'm going to move my cursor, select also gear number one box, smart plane, plane, start plane, start plane, click on that. Start plane will be the very tip of it, click, okay. Now I am moving on to this gear number two box here, cylindrical face. I click inside the cylindrical face, I select one of the, okay, axles, fix axles, and click. Okay. Now I'm saying calculate the computer, and then I, after I calculate, click on the calculator button, it has to do the math after I make my decision, I click on OK, and then I click on OK button again, one more time, and accept. So uh, I did this one more time, and I think it took me two, two times, two tries, okay? And now we have pretty much exactly the same way. Um, I'm going to demonstrate one more time. I, I'm going to uh, undo it, Control Z, to show you the process, okay? I'm going to go back, Control Z, yes, okay? <clears throat> um, I'm going to spur gear, select the spur gear, and I'm going to select the cylindrical face of the second arm, click, I'm going to select the starting plane of the, uh, this time starting plane will be one of the axles, front surface of the one of the axles, and I'm moving my cursor into the gear number two, select the cylindrical face, and select the one of the axles, the round surface of one of the axles. And I ask on calculate, I ask computer to okay it, I ask, I click okay button, and accept it. Now it's created, okay? Um, the only problem is now this time, uh, 
doesn't look like it didn't it recognized the starting plane so I'm going to do that one more time okay so this time it worked and it, it appears to be we have the uh, two gears okay operational and small gear is directly connected to the axle and the, that's the uh, movable axle of the second arm and the larger gear is directly connected to uh, the one of the fixed axles however uh, we need to uh, put the constraints in between small gear and the second arm axle okay so for that we need another constraint so that if i when i rotate the second arm the gear will rotate too and that's the whole point so to do that i'm going to rotate it in a such a way that i can see both uh, axle and the gear now i'm going to go and find out the constraints under the assemble tab and there's a constraint rotational constraint i'm going to uh, select rotational constraint okay All right, and now uh, rotational constraint gives me ability to select angular constraint. I'm, I'm sorry, this is angular constraint. Uh, there's an insertion constraint. There's a, a contact con tangency constraint, uh, symmetry constraint. Now we are in the uh, angular. There's a mate constraint. Uh, mate constraint is not what we want right now. Uh, what we're looking for is uh, angular constraint. So we choose the second arm, okay, is the first uh, click here. And then we choose the surface of the small gear, okay. Okay, so we're going to do this one more time, and we're going to go to, uh, again, constraint menu, okay, and select the motion constraint. Motion constraint gives me, enables me to select the type of the constraint. It is the same direction or opposite direction kind of constraint. Okay, it's, it's going to be, this is going to be the same direction constraint. Click on this first one, select the first button, and select the the axle of the second arm. Okay, now we're selecting the surface of the, um, I think we're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to change the direction. Direction does not agree right now. I'm gonna have to do this one more time. Select it, axle. Okay, this is a clockwise rotation. And please uh, select the second one and clockwise rotation and apply see if it's working properly so we need to rotate the second arm to see the rotation yes it's rotating properly and I'm rotating clockwise, entire second arm clockwise as it rotates clockwise. Oh, it's rotating in opposite direction. Now I'm gonna to have to change that direction. So I'm double clicking the rotation and it's and I'm entering minus one instead of one to control 
there, okay. And there it is. Everything is. Now gear is rotating clockwise as the second arm rotates clockwise. Cool. Okay. So next thing to do is uh, mechanical advantages of four gears. Mechanical advantage for four gears, okay, will be connected to the fixed, uh, the second, uh, the fixed axle, and we're going to do that in a second now. So we're going to continue the operation exactly the same way we did before. We're going to go to the design. Under the design, select the spur gear option and select the spur gear. Okay, this is the spur gear command and spur gear command. I changed the desired gear ratio this time to four. Okay, gear ratio is four or because mechanical advantage is four. And the gear one is going to be the cylindrical face select the cylindrical face of the second axle that I have chosen. And for the starting plane, click on the starting plane and select the surface of the back surface of the se uh, second gear as a starting plane. Go to the second gear in the dialog box. There's a second gear option, cylindrical face. Select, click inside the cylindrical face button and click the fixed, one of the uh, fixed uh, surface of round surfaces of the fixed axle on the top click and everything seems to be correct i press the calculate button so that uh, four times five okay gears apparently yield to four times 20 so everything seems good and i click okay now and i'm clicking okay now and i'm accepting okay so now we have two more gears are created okay and i want to connect the second gear on the surface of the uh, third gear on the surface of the second gear to the second gear as well and the, the fourth gear it rotates as the uh, third gear rotates okay and then it has to be connected to each other obviously so again i'm going to use motion uh, constraint. I'm going back to the assemble tab. I'm selecting uh, constraints. I'm going to go to motion constraint. Okay. These are all going to be uh, because gears are rotating in opposite direction. I'm choosing the second option here, opposite direction, because one gear rotates clockwise, the other gear, gear rotates counterclockwise. So I'm choosing opposite uh, rotational uh, relationship, motional relationship. For the first gear, I'm just move, I'm going to move my cursor and I'm going to click on the first gear, surface of the interior surface, first gear. And for the second gear, I'm going to move to backside of the second gear mashing, fourth gear, I'm sorry, and, and click here and then select the surface of the, of the next gear right here. And uh, my cursor is having a difficult time to select the correct gear. No, uh, control Z. I'm going to take this back. Okay. And gear is rotating properly. So I don't have to do anything. What I need to do, second gear and third gear has to be connected to each other. So I go to constraint. They should be connected to each other using the motion and the same direction rotation. And first is already selected, so click on the backside surface of the uh, the third gear, and then click on the second side of the uh, second gear. Click, okay, and apply. And to see the relationship, I'm going to just close everything, and I'm going to rotate second arm. Mm -hmm just to see the relationship. Okay, so everything seems to be working properly. Okay, so we took care of uh, the four gears correctly. And now I'm going to go and fix fifth and sixth gears. 
And what is the mechanical advantage or uh, relationship between these next two gears? That's going to be this time five. So we're going to be using number five. Okay. And to do that, where do you think the fifth gear is going to go? Fifth gear is going to go directly behind the fourth gear. And the fifth, sixth gear is going to be one on top. Okay. So I'm going to go to again assemble tab and select um, select the uh, design go to spur gear select the spur gear command we have the dialog box in front of us okay i hope you're all seeing the dialog box and now i'm changing desired gear ratio which is meant to be mechanical advantage here and five okay and together with that I'm keeping the number of the gear, uh, first gear, number of the teeth for the first gear at five, but I'm asking computer to calculate, click on the calculate button. So five times five is 25. So this is automatically number of the teeth on the second gear changed to 25. This is cool. Here is what I can do now. And I'm going to select. Again, remember please, everything is designed by module and design gear ratio is five. And I did not, change any of the values here on the screen so i am uh, literally selecting the cylindrical face of the uh, my fifth gear click okay the cylindrical face of the fifth gear is same as uh, the my fourth gear okay select that same axle okay and now i need the starting plane starting plane is click in on the starting plane and starting with is backside of the fourth gear, so click, okay. And now I'm going to move my cursor into the gear number two area and select the cylindrical face of F1 of the three fixed axles. So I click on it, okay. I think from the way it looks in green lines, looks okay. So I'm gonna go and okay button, click, and I'm going to click okay button again and accept. Okay, so now we have two gears are created and I'm gonna click okay, uh, save option, this is very important. Okay, we have six gears created already using the same function, okay? So uh, when I rotate the fifth and fifth gear and sixth gear rotate or naturally rotates but the, when i rotate the fifth gear uh, the fourth gear is supposed to be attached to it and rotate together and it doesn't and it bothers me so for that i go back to assemble i go back constrain because two gears are connected to each other fourth and fifth gears are supposed to be connected. so what i'm going to do i'm going to go to motion again under the constraint select the motion and same direction select same direction rotation select the First selection is already pressed, so I'm going to go and choose the first gear and then click and on the second gear, okay, and then apply and just to see what's happening, close it and rotate. Everything is rotating, but those last two gears are rotating much slower rate, but rotating the same direction. Attached gears are rotating in the same direction. I think so far so good, okay. Now, uh, I'm going to take a break here at this point and I want you to continue doing what you're doing. I think I'm done with the um, second arm. Now I'm going to work on uh, the minute, minute arm. Minute arm only requires three and four mechanical advantages, okay. So I'm going to uh, enable you to, in the next session, uh, do the minute arm gears together with me. And, uh, and then we're going to go from there. Thank you.